Income tax 2021-2022 tax software example. Business expenses, car and truck expenses. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lacert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the Schedule C business rolling into page one of the Form 1040, line number eight. Let's see that rolling through. We're going to go over to the Schedule C, where we have our business income on the Schedule C, profit or loss from business and we're going to say that we had 120,000 income we've got the 20,000 of expenses to start off with there's the 100,000 the net then rolling in to schedule one so it rolls into schedule one additional income on line number three which totals up down here down below line number 10 that rolls then in to page one of the form 1040 which we could see on line number eight then we also have the self-employment tax we got to deal with. So if we go to the self-employment tax, you'll recall that it's going to be calculated on the net income. This is Social Security and Medicare calculated at the 14129. That 14129 rolling into the Form 1040 this time to page number two. That's not the federal income tax. That's the self-employment tax, Social Security and Medicare. Half of that amount you can see also calculated on the Schedule SE at the 7065 half of the 14129 is deductible above the line which we see on schedule one page number two schedule one page number two having 7065 that pulls into the 1040 page numero uno that's number one and that's here on the 7065 that gets us to the adjusted gross income of the 92935 we got the standard deduction for the single filer 12550 and then we've got the business the qualified business income deduction which we're letting the software calculate coming from form 8990 to get us finally to the taxable income let's just recalculate that real quick on our excel sheet so we've got the income that comes from the Schedule C. Schedule C, which we could recreate. I'm just going to put the recreation here. That's going to give us our 100000 pulling in then to the 100000 here. We then have the added tax, the self-employment tax. Let's take a look at that first. The additional tax. We did this calculation before. I won't go through it again, but we did this nice calculation that calculates it for us here at the 14130 and that pulls on over to our our formula at the added tax here and then we get half of that that's deductible above the line in the adjustment which we've got our automatic worksheet that just does that for us we've automated that process as well bringing it on in here so there's the 92 935 agi tying out to what we have here 92 935 12550 standard deduction and then i'm just going to populate from the software at this point the 1677 for the qualified business income so i'm going to say this is going to be 1677 that gives us to the taxable income 64308 there's the 64308 page number two calculating the federal income tax 9900 9900 here and then the 14130 for the social security and medicare payroll tax or the self-employment tax gets us to the 2430 about which is off by a dollar of the 14 or i'm sorry the 2429 so that looks good that's our starting point now we're looking at the car We've got a car that we use in the business. Two methods we can use for the deduction, actual method or the standard method. First year that you put the car in place, you wanna to try to project out into the future and see what your benefit would be if you were to take one or the other deductions. Also noting, however, that if you use the actual method, then generally you can't jump back on over to the standard mileage method. The actual method is usually gonna be a little bit more complex to calculate. Uh, as well and you got to have better bookkeeping for the actual method with the mileage method you just need basically the business miles and the personal miles possibly the commuting miles as well so let's do the mileage method first so i'm going to go back on over mileage method a method that's done with the miles hence mileage method so we're going to go then down to the data input for the mileage method which is a 2106 form 
And so I'm going to say that this is going to go to the Schedule C. So it's going to be applied to the Schedule C here. And let's scroll on down and say, I'm just going to put a generic name here. Say it's going to be a truck. You might be more specific than that, a truck and possibly naming the actual specific truck because you want to make sure that you can check it out uh, from the future. You might put the last four digits of the, of the license plate number or something like that. Date placed in service, I'm just going to put 010122. Remember that if it's been in service for more than the current year, 010122, then you got to make you got to see if, if you need consistency with the method that was used in the prior year or or not so you got to take that into consideration the first year you put it into place then you want to possibly try out both methods if you have the available information to see which would be most beneficial possibly not just in the current year but thinking forward into future years and so then we could say the total miles now this is something that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to kind of get or get from a client or determine yourself and you might you know have some estimates of this but you would want to make sure that you have this the supporting information to determine you know how you came up with the total miles and how you came up with the business miles and you might do that with with kind of an estimate so we might say well the total miles let's say on the year were let's say they were 12,500 125 and obviously part of the way you could do this is just check your mileage at the beginning of the year and then you know check it at the end of the year and try to determine what the difference is and we might say that like maybe 80 percent of that we're going to say is business related so it so i'm going to say then times 0.8 now if it was purely used for business is that if this was your business vehicle then it might be all business related but i'm going to say that the 10,000 10,000 is for business 80 percent so we're going to say 80 percent business and then the commuting miles which are going to be part of the non-business miles and let's say our total commuting miles i'll just put 500 for the commute then we have up here we got the vehicle is used primarily by a more than five percent owner so i'm going to say yes vehicle is available for off duty i'm going to say it is in this case no other vehicle is available for personal use so whether that be applicable or not no evidence to support your deduction i'm not going to put i'm not going to check that no written evidence to support your deduction i'll keep that the way it is so then that's going to be our mileage information average daily round trip number of months a uh, number of months of business use if charged from 100 percent personal use parking and tolls so you can also still add basically the parking and tolls here even though you're using this this mileage method so maybe we say parking and tolls we'll say 300 and there we have it so let's pull it on over and let's see what happens on our form shall we so if we go back on over, we've got then our Schedule C, Schedule C here. And so now we've got this added line item for the car and truck expenses. Now note that the thing that you got to be careful of here with your bookkeeping side of things is that the bookkeeping that you might then have might have some stuff that's in there for like gas or, or repairs or something like that, which if you're using the mileage method, you've got to kind of remove it from there and then put it into the and then and then use your mileage method in place of that so it can cause a little bit of trickiness just with regards to the bookkeeping differences between what's on the bookkeeping side and the business side and if you get a lot of differences like that it could be useful to set up kind of a worksheet in excel to basically see what those differences are and, and kind of account for those differences in the event that there's an audit or some questioning that happens later on or just to explain it uh, to somebody but I won't dive into that at this point so then we're going to say that the other the other calculation for it let's see the detail on it there's usually a worksheet down here vehicle expenses so now we've got the truck it was 10,000 business miles and then 80 percent uh, the use for the business so and they just did the division problem here so we said okay total mile or business miles 10,000 divided by 12 5 80 percent that's how we came up with the 10,000 we took the 12 five times 80 percent and then we've got then the multiple line three by 0.56 that's the amount they're going to give us per mile on the mileage method that's why it's the mileage method because they give us that amount per mile so we multiply that out that gives us the 5,600 uh, we got the depreciation per per mile 26 cents and the the uh, portion of mileage so they broke out the basically percentage down here for the depreciation portion and the operating portion so there's going to be the 5006 
if we scroll on down we're going to also add in the parking fees and tolls because those we still get even though we're using the mileage method brings it up to the five nine the five nine then pulls into our car and truck expense here now we could also mirror that on our worksheet over here you might then you might actually add another schedule to calculate the mileage um, method but it's usually going to be part of the schedule see what's this we could add the other form if we wanted to maybe we should maybe we should we should do that so the other form then was the well let's just put a schedule called vehicle so I'm, I'll add another one and I'm just going to call it vehicle or auto vehicle and then I'll make this thing I'll make this thing formatted right click and I'm going to do this fairly quickly because it's not an Excel course but we'll just show you the Excel thing here I'm going to say brackets no and then get rid of the decimals for now I'm going to scroll it in and then I'm going to first put the mileage method mileage method and so let's do that let's make the whole thing bolden emboldened it we got to be emboldened and then let's make this let's make this black and white black and white as has been our custom for headers that's not where's the white part I can't see the text okay so then we're gonna say we're gonna say business miles which we put in was 10,000 10,000 and then the the amount per mile so the rate the rate in other words that's what I mean by the amount per mile was the rate was uh, 56 cents so 0.56 per mile let's bracketize that's uh, add some decimals to that one multiplying it out this times this so there's our our amount so there's our amount so let's call this a subtotal and then we've got parking parking and fees I think it was fees that we can include still parking and fees that we could include so parking fees and tolls parking fees and tolls parking fees and tolls tolls so that's going to be 300 and so that's going to give us the total mileage method which is going to be equal to let's say the sum equals the sum of these items so there we have it let's put that on the outside now let's put it in here sorry I'm getting so we're gonna then some we're gonna let's make this blue we'll make it blue and border it borders and then this one I'll keep white but border because actually no this one I'm gonna make white because that one's calculating there and the subtotal I can make that white and then this one needs data input so this one should be blue blue and bordered and there's there's our total which is going to total up for us so that 5009 that I'm going to put over here in the schedule C auto auto is going to be equal to the vehicle stuff over here at the 59 so that's our starting point that brings us then to the 94 uh, 100 94 100 if I go to my schedule C that gets us to the 94 100 that pulls into the first page of the 1040 94 100 pulling in to the first page of the form 1040 94 100 I won't go into the to the rest of it right now because we're focusing in on the miles okay so now let's say that we want to test out the actual mile at uh, the actual method so let's delete this one here let's do it a different way let's say we go into the depreciation stuff depreciable thing it's going to be a truck again truck so we're going to have to calculate the the cost of the depreciation then so category and this is going to go into the the form this needs to be going into the form I'm going to take it to the schedule C and then I'm going to say that the category is this time going to be a it's going to be an automobile and the date place and service 010122 we'll say the cost let's say it was a $50,000 automobile and then the method we're going to use 
is going to be make sure you got the right maker's method, which is an accelerated method, but we could have a cap on the luxury autos. So I'm going to say five year makers with the auto limits applied. And then I'll keep the 179 and so on if applicable. So that looks good. And then we could jump down to like the automobile stuff. So I'm going to go to the vehicle stuff down here. Uh, so listed property, no evidence of support, no written evidence, sport utility, reduced uh, SE if the vehicle improvement additions, use of vehicle, vehicle is available for off duty. I'm going to say yes, no other vehicle is available. So I'll check that off. Vehicle is used primarily by a more. I'm going to check that off. Now, we also could have a situation where not 100% of that would be personal as we're indicating here. But let's let's keep it easy right now and keep it all personal. We also have this idea of, of the sport utility vehicle, which could adjust uh, the, the, the cap that might be on the vehicle and basically adjust the method that we might be using. But we won't get into that now. I'm going to I'm going to keep it there for now. So now if I pull on over, then go into the schedule C. So now on the schedule, and there's nothing there. I think I put it in the future. I figured it out. So I'm gonna go back. It's gotta be in 2000, it's gotta be in the current year. There we go, in 2021. Now I'm gonna go back on over. And so now we've got the information not in the car and truck, but down here and the depreciation and section 179 expense deduction down below. So we've got the item of uh, the depreciation being calculated, and then we've got the depreciation schedules on the calculation as well. Let's go to the regular one where we've got the cost, the special depreciation being applied or allocated here. In this instance, it's pulling in to the Schedule C. Now we might have other expenses that would be applied here. So if I went back on over and we go to the automobile information, so now we've got that stuff and then we have the the actual vehicle expenses so we might still have the parking and tolls for example that would still be applicable under possibly either method that we saw 300 and then the gasoline and whatnot could be on top of the depreciation so let's say this was 150 repairs is 200 tires is going to be 30 insurance let's say is a thousand or something like that right and these other things uh, could be applicable if we're using the actual method as opposed to the mileage method. So if I, and before I jump over, I'm going to assume still that we're using it 100% this time for business. So I put 10,000 in the total miles and then 10,000 in the business miles so that if I pull then back on over to the Schedule C, now we've got the depreciation and we, we also have the car and truck, which is related to the, you know, the same thing, depreciation on the car and the car and truck expenses here. If I then go into the vehicle worksheet, then we could see the, the information that's doing the same uh, calculation here and it's pulling over the actual expenses, which are coming out to that 1,680, the 1,680 which consists of the gasoline, the repairs, the tire insurance, and then also this $300, the parking and fees, which would be applicable under either method that was used that that's then pulling into the Schedule C. Now, if we had some kind of allocation, let's say that 80% of, of the automobile was used for business, let's say, so now I can go back up and say, okay, well, I can't take the full depreciation then, I have to have some percentage that we're going to take. So in the additional information, so I'm going to say the percent used for percent of business use will say was 80%. So that's going to restrict the depreciation amount. And then when I go to the automobile information down here on the actual expenses, what did I have it before? I had it at 12, 12 something. Let's say it was, let's say it was 1200 or 12,000 miles, 12,000 miles. And let's give it the 80%, 12,000 times 0.8, which would be 9,006, 9,006 here, 9,600. Zero, zero. And then we've got our items then on down below. So now if I go back on over and see what we calculate for it, we're at the 14,560 on the depreciation. If I go to the depreciation here on the schedule and look at the regular depreciation, 
So now we've got the 80%. We've got the 14,560 on the special that's pulling in then to Schedule C. If we look at the vehicle information, then we've got, this is a little bit tricky. We've got those same items for the full amount, the 150, the 200, the 30, plus the 1,000. And I'm going to multiply that times 0 0.8. That gives us the 1,104. And then add the, the other, the 300 here, plus the 300 plus 300 that's what gives us that 1404 that then pulls into the schedule c that they're pulling in here now again you can put both both of these methods kind of together into the system so notice that i have the system calculating basically the two methods here because i got the total the mileage method that's calculating up top as well as the actual method that is up top here so, so you can basically, it'll take the larger of the two methods, given the fact that I've got the information for both methods in place. Now you might end up in a situation where you try to do that, but maybe you still want to force one method or the other in the first year, because you also kind of take into consideration the following years where you're not going to have like the advanced depreciation in the beginning of the time frame. So the fact that we took more depreciation in period one could have an impact on the following years. So you might say, well, I'd still want to force the standard mileage rate, for example. So if I was to say, I want to force the standard mileage rate, then if I go back on over and look at the schedule C, now we just got the 5,676 in uh, line line nine, and we're not taking basically the, the depreciation here that has been calculated. And so, and then uh, on the vehicle, worksheet if we were to take a look at it we have the same calculations up top between the two methods but we're now going to be picking and taking the mileage me method which came out to that 5676 which pulled in to uh, the schedule the schedule c now just realize if you were to try to mirror this on your excel worksheet over here then if you were doing the vehicle you're probably not going to recalculate the depreciation methods so you're going to rely on the software to some degree to help you with the depreciation methods to determine which would be the most beneficial method most likely and just kind of try to try to mirror that basically in your excel sheet and then that's what you could pull into your 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 schedule c but also just realize that the more complex your business is and the more of these complex items you might put together a more complex worksheet to help you to kind of to, to figure these things out or see what those, you know, the differences between the books are and the tax code, which could have differences that would result from things like using a mileage method, for example. Also note that if you're using the actual method, I'm gonna bring this back to the 50,000 and say we have 100% that will be deductible just to take a look at going back on over to the forms here and looking at our depreciation down below you'll note that it's been put in here into the special depreciation so you got to keep in mind the qualifications for the auto limits that could be in involved you got to keep in mind the special depreciation and the 179 depreciation which is a whole other kind of topic in and of itself if you're getting into the depreciation methods the special depreciation the 179s are forms of accelerated depreciation so you could have a situation for example it might not qualify for the special depreciation, then possibly qualifies for the 179 uh, depreciation in that event. And if not, then you'd be kicked down to basically the current uh, depreciation method. So just to take a look at that real quick, if I got the 18 uh, 200 with the special depreciation applied, if we didn't qualify for the special depreciation, we could say, okay, I'm not gonna qualify for, for the special. And then if I go back on over, it's going to be at the 10,000 unless I do qualify for the current. So you might say, it's, I'm, I'm sorry for the 179 deduction. So I could go over to the 179 deduction here and say, okay, I'm going to put the 50,000 into the 179, making that. So if I go back on over, that then is at the 10,200. So you've got the special depreciation to determine whether or not it would qualify for the special. If not, do you still qualify? Would it qualify for the 179? If not, then you would be taking the general double declining uh, depreciation for the makers, which is basically a, a double decline half year uh, convention method as well. So I won't dive into those uh, in too much more detail here, but we might dive into them in a little bit more detail in future presentations with regards to special depreciation, current 179, and then, you know, the auto limits 
that are combined in with those depreciation methods, which again is why another reason why a lot of times the the actual method is a little bit more confusing than, of course, the mileage method.